five Sakayan princes, Prince Badia, Prince Anuradha, Prince Ananda, Prince Bagu, and Prince Kimbala, along with Kolyan Prince Devadatta, and a barber named Upali, approached the Buddha and asked for ordination. The Buddha ordained Upali the barber first, followed by each of the six princes respectively. Not long after their ordination, Venerables Upali, Badia, Anuruddha, Bagu, and Kimbila attained Arahanship. Venerable Ananda, receiving instruction from Venerable Punamantaniputta, attained the fruition of stream entry. Venerable Devadatta achieved only the mundane attainments of various psychic powers. I am from the royal clan. Why are the laity respectful and devoted to other monks and not to me? Ah, Prince Ajatasatu, son of King Bimbisara of Rajagaha. He is still young, doesn't yet know right from wrong. I'll display my supernatural powers and gain the devotion of the young prince. Then whatever I may wish for, he'll find a way to get it for me. <laughs> sir, sir, who are you? What do you want with me? Don't harm me. Soldiers! Wait! Prince Ajatasatu, don't be frightened. Venerable sir, oh, venerable sir, how do you know me? Oh ho, Prince, look at me! Oh, 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 oh. Venerable sir! My name is Venerable Devadatta. I wish you no harm. I am here to help you. To help me? To help me with what? You will know when that time comes. Farewell for now. Just a moment. I displayed my supernatural powers and Prince Ajatasatu gained great faith in me. Now, whatever I may wish for, he gives to me. What a suitable leader I would be for the Sangha. now getting very old. It's time for you to lay your duties down. I request the burden of leading the Sangha. Please make the matter known to all the bhikkhus. From now on, I'll take over your teaching responsibilities. Absolutely not, Devata. But Lord! Lord! The Buddha humiliated me in front of all the monks. 
Then he enacted the Pakasani Akama, preventing the other monks from speaking to me or meeting with me. From this point on, I've set my mind on bringing him to destruction. <laughs> he can't do this. He can't do this to me. Your Royal Highness, please think it over. Even though you have now inherited the throne as you wished, you must still execute your royal father. Should he change his mind and wish to take his throne back, he would be sure to kill you. Therefore, you must act first without warning. That could be arranged. I'll keep him imprisoned until his life comes to an end. It's your decision, your royal highness. I've tried to take his life three times, but in vain. It's time to try my last resort. I have to pretend to be strict in Dhamma Vinaya, so that all the bhikkhus will become my disciples. In order that the bhikkhus in the Buddha's dispensation may inspire greater faith of the lay people, may I request that the Buddha approve the following five rules to establish strict practice guidelines for all monks. Number one, a bhikkhu must live only in the forest, not in a town or village. Number two, a bhikkhu must live only on food given on alms round. Meal invitations are not to be accepted. Number three, a bhikkhu must wear only rag robes. He must not accept an offering of new robes. Number four, a bhikkhu must live only at the foot of a tree, not in a man-made construction. Number five, a bhikkhu must not eat any kind of meat. Should any bhikkhu break any of these rules, he must face punishment. What does the Lord think about these rules? Devata, I deny my permission. This Dhamma Vinaya is not slack in its rules. What you are asking for would create inconvenience for all bhikkhus in terms of maintaining their livelihood. Let all these observances be voluntary. As for the rule against eating meat, I allow meat which is pure in three aspects, not seen, heard, or suspected, to have been killed specifically for the sake of oneself. My bhikkhus, who do you think is superior? My rules are stricter, aren't they? Whoever agrees, should come and live with me. Devata, don't do this. Breaking up the Bhikkhu Sangha is a very heavy, evil karma. From this day on, I am no longer your disciple. I'll be carrying out formal acts of the community only with my own monks. Whoever agrees, follow me. Devadatta, can't you see that you're not a suitable leader for the Bhikkhu Sangha? Go, Kalika, what are you saying? <laughs> what am I saying? What am I saying? Just now, Buddha's left and right hand disciples, the Venerables Mogalana and Sariputta, came to give teachings and instruction to your disciples. Having listened, almost all of your disciples followed the two Venerables back to Jetavana Monastery. Only a few of your most foolish and ignorant followers remain. Coca Liga? It's impossible! It's impossible! 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 Is that all the strict forest monk can say? Coca Liga? You! You! You are a fake. You are wearing the yellow robe only for the sake of gain and honor. You are boastful and conceited, even to the point of competing with the Lord Buddha. I have no wish to stay with you any longer. Kogalika! Come back here now! Kogalika!
I've been seriously ill with no improvement for a long time. It must be because of my offensive and injurious behavior towards the Buddha. But in return, the Buddha has nothing but loving kindness toward me, expressing not even the slightest ill will or resentment. Now coming to the end of my life, I'd like to seek out the Lord Buddha in order to ask for his forgiveness. Monks, be quick and take me to Jetavana Monastery. to Jetavana Monastery. Stop for a while so that I can bathe myself before entering into the presence of the Lord Buddha. knowledge and conduct. Great one, teacher of gods and humans, I leave my chin bone as an offering to the Buddha, and I take the Lord Buddha as my refuge forever. I take the Lord Buddha as my refuge forever. Venerable Devadatta has performed gravely serious evil karma. Even coming so close to Jetavana Monastery, he still was unable to catch a glimpse of the Lord Buddha. Oh, rather, he was swallowed up by the earth and sank down into hell. And I myself cooperated with him in committing a tremendous many evil. Buddha, I now realize my mistake. Please, may I beg your pardon? Please forgive me. I promise I will never do unwholesome deeds like that again. Your Majesty, it is a timeless law that in this world, hatred can only ever be appeased by non-hatred. One who associates with fools is doomed to sorrow for a long time. One who is perfect in morality shines like a bright flame. One with mindfulness is happy and grows in the Dhamma at every moment. If a king rules with Dhamma, all his citizens will be happy. Bhikkhus, all conditioned things are of the nature to arise, persist for a while, and then pass away. Therefore, we should consider such things as impermanent, uncertain, unreliable. The tears of beings who wander from birth to death on the wheel of samsara are countless. Their corpses pile up to cover every inch of the earth. It's such an enormous pity and worthy of sadness. 
Those who cling to attachment to the forms, sounds, smells, tastes, and touches of this world have not the slightest chance of ever going beyond it. <laughs> 